So here we go, nationalism in Austria. Uh, this is a, an interesting one. While nationalism was a positive in places like Italy and in Germany, it was not so for Austria. The old world empires of the Austria Habsburg Empire and the Ottoman Empire are going to begin to fade. These two areas both ruled large multi-ethnic peoples. To the many ethnic groups, each one began to have their own feelings of nationalism. They wanted to become their own independent countries. They wanted a country of their own, and it's going to cause these people to break free of their old world masters. And if you look at Austria, right in the heart of, of Europe, by the year 1800, the Austrian Habsburg Empire was the oldest ruling dynasty in Europe. Their territory was massive. Remember, this is the part of the empire that King Charles V of Spain gave to his brother. So they got this territory through Central and Eastern Europe from the Ukraine and Poland to what is today the Czech Republic and Slovakia. It is a large empire. It is multi-ethnic and very diverse, many languages. And a large part of the, of the empire was the individual country of Hungary. All right, so here is the Austria-Hungarian Empire. All of these different colored countries and this big giant gray one known as Hungary. This is it. It's big and it borders on the Ottoman Empire here, Germany here, and Russia over there. So here it is. Um, since the conclusion of the Congress of Vienna, the Emperor Francis I and his Prime Minister Clemens von Metternich had worked overtime trying to reassert absolutism throughout their empire. They actually outlawed the word constitution, any speech, any writings, anything at all that contained the word constitution was outlawed. And while everyone else around them began to rapidly industrialize, <coughs> excuse me, due to the Industrial Revolution, the Austrian Habsburg Empire tries to stay traditional. No, we are going to stay. This is how we've done it for centuries. We're not going to modernize. Modernization leads to the fall of the government. So we're going to stay this way, and it's what we are going to do. And so they limited the amount of industrialization inside the empire. And this will spread discontent among the industrialized workers. And the king you know, was asked, what do your people say about this? He says, people, who are people? I don't have people, I have subjects. That really doesn't make his people mad. And so... Um, Francis and Metternich will beat down on the growth of cities. And this actually promotes and spreads the ideas of socialism in Karl Marx. Everyone was contained and constrained, and the Habsburg Empire was difficult to govern. It had a population of close to 50 million people. Um, however, German-speaking Austrians make up you know, um, only about 20 to 25 percent of their country. A lot of the people, 75 to 80 percent, had nationalist feelings and demands. Instead of talking and working with his people, they ignored their pleas. But every now and then there was a rebellion. And in 1848, they, there are several. And so to show people what happens when you rebel, these rebellions were brutally just crushed, all right? The army was sent in, the leaders were captured, people were killed. I mean, it was just a brutal beatdown. However, everybody else in Europe is keeping an eye on this. And they say, look, man, you've got to control your empire. A problem in your territory can cause problems for the rest of us. Your boy Clemens von Metternich is the one who came up with this. So keep your own house in order. The entire stability of Europe is at stake. 
And then we have the war with Sardinia and the Piedmont, Count Camille Cavour, and the war with France and Prussia. And when Emperor Francis I is defeated, he realizes that in order to strengthen his grip on his empire, he is going to have to do something. All right? We're going to have to make some reforms, even if they are an illusion. So his response was to create a constitution that set up a parliamentary, parliamentary excuse me, legislature. Now, however, as I said, this was just smoke and mirrors. The legislature that is elected to help govern and advise the emperor was dominated by German-speaking Austrian nobles. They were all Francis I's boys. They were the nobles who were already advising him. Now they, they are just called a parliament. This accomplishes not a single thing except making many of the people angry, especially people in Hungary. And so the answer of this, um, this good old boy network, is to be the creation of what's called the dual monarchy, one of the dumbest things ever. Because of the outcries of many of the Hungarians, Francis I comes up with an idea, a compromise, where he will support Hungarian nationalism. Hungarians, you get your own country, yay! And the Austrian Habsburg Empire becomes known as the dual monarchy in 1867. The emperor at this time, Franz Joseph, was the emperor of the Austrian Empire. And at the same time, he is King Franz Joseph of an independent Hungary. They simply just change the title. He is the king of Hungary and the emperor of everybody else. The two countries will still share finances and taxation. They will share ideas on, on military foreign affairs. But they're separated in all other areas. What those are is difficult to tell. Now what this does is it makes many of the other minority groups, especially the Czechs, who are angry at being left out, it makes them really bitter. Whoops. Um, and so here you have the new territory, independent Hungary, and everything else is the Austrian Empire. So the Czechs are angry at being left out, and they claim that all Slavic countries, countries who are descended from people of Russian descent, to unite. And they say only through all right, and this is a big quote here, only through liberty, equality, and fraternal solidarity can we fulfill the great mission in the history of mankind for the Slavic peoples. Only through liberty, equality, and fraternal solidarity can Slavic peoples fulfill their great mission in the history of mankind. So, Many of these smaller nationalities buy into this, and they think that they deserve to be their own independent countries, or maybe even side with Russia. And so while the greater German population in Austria stays loyal to the Emperor Franz Joseph, there are also some in Austria who want to be part of Bismarck's powerful new Germany. And... This is what is going to happen. This is what is going to be the problem for Austria up and through World War I. Yeah, we're powerful, but exactly what does that mean? Is our power smoke and mirrors? Like, like what, what else is there? What else can we do? And so this is really going to affect the Austrian Habsburg Empire uh, to the end of World War I, where they completely and totally fall apart. Next, we're going to talk about nationalism in Russia, which is a little bit more interesting. And I'll see you guys Monday.